Close your eyes, watch your breath. Give it your full attention. You don't want the mind to be multitasking right now. Give it a monotask, trying to stay with the breath as consistently as possible. Because it's not hard to focus on the breath. What's harder is to maintain the focus without gaps. Because it's in the gaps that all kinds of things can happen in the mind, and you don't see them because your attention is diverted. But you can learn from the gaps. In other words, when you see that the mind is about to go, you say no. And there'll be a little bit of a struggle. And you begin to realize that part of the mind has been lying in wait for the gap. So it's not simply that you lose your focus for a bit. There's another part of the mind that wants to go someplace else. And it's just lying in wait. And yet you weren't seeing it. Or if you were seeing it, you were denying it. Now, as you're meditating, you want to get, get so that you can see these things as they form. They've done these experiments where they've tested brain waves, and they've determined from some brain waves that people make decisions before they're conscious of them. And from that, they conclude that the body is what making the decision, and the mind comes in second. But that's a hasty conclusion. From the Buddhist point of view, it's simply that we're ignorant of what's going on. We turn a blind eye, a willful blind eye, to a lot of things going on in the mind. And that's what we have to fight, as these decisions are made, and they're made very quickly, and then they hide, and then they come back again, and then they hide. And we're willing to play along with them. But now we're not playing along. We want to see them, nip them in the bud. So each time you sense the mind wandering off, stop it and see what kind of momentum you're pushing against. And the quicker you can be to catch the mind as it's about to go off, the more you see all the various stages of how these thoughts form in the mind, these urges form in the mind, and their duplicity before they take over. When you see through that, you've gained a big victory in the training of the mind. You can get the mind to the point where, as the Buddha said, you can think thoughts you want to think and not think thoughts you don't want to think. And your sense of what's worth thinking and what's not worth thinking also becomes a lot more, more subtle, more skillful. So you really do become in charge of your own mind. That way, our desire for happiness, which is our motivation for all the things we do, gets more consistent. As we see more and more clearly what really is for our true well-being, and we're able to act on it consistently. That's when the different movements of the mind all become part of the path.